Creating this liquid glass effect by Apple in Blender is super simple. Let's hop right into it. All right, to start off, we'll need three basic things. We'll need a plane because we need a surface to work on and we'll need two more of these. So I'm gonna duplicate this with Shift D and I'm just gonna rotate these and place them on the sides of my other plane. These are gonna act as reflectors to help with our lighting. I'm gonna duplicate my plane one more time, but this time I'm gonna scale it way down and this is gonna act as our surface that we're gonna use for the glass and the objects underneath the glass. Now, in order to mimic this exactly the way that we want to, I'm actually gonna save this image and import it into Blender using image as planes. To import our saved image, I'm simply gonna go to add image, and then I'm going to click on mesh plane, and I'll locate my image in my downloads folder. Once we do import our image, you'll see that it acts as a plane right here. We need to go over to material preview so we can actually see our image and overlay our objects to try to match these shapes. Now I'll switch to my top down view by clicking this Z button. Now you can see that we can actually start to scale down our object and sort of try to fit it to the shapes that we see here on the image. We'll be using a custom modifier stack that I created just for this tutorial, but in order to create these actual colored shapes underneath, all we have to do is we have to add a bevel modifier to our plane and we'll click on the vertices option and then we'll just increase this until it's about perfect. We'll do about one for the amount. And then if we increase our segments, you can see that now we have a perfect circle. But you're probably thinking we need this rectangle, so in order to accomplish that, we tab into edit mode, and then we simply scale this on the X axis, S, X to scale, until we're happy with the result. I'm pretty happy with that, so I'm gonna tab out of edit mode, and now you can see we have this shape that reflects the shape underneath. I'm gonna duplicate this using Shift D, and we're actually gonna use this same shape to create our lens. All right, so this is where our custom modifier stack comes in. So with our top plane selected, we're gonna add all of these different modifiers that you see here on the right. We already have our bevel, so we can collapse that. I'm also gonna to wanna to solidify this so we actually have some thickness to our shape. I found that a thickness of about 0.5 works very well for what we're gonna do with the shape. The next thing that you'll need is a remesh modifier because we actually are gonna take this and smooth it out. I'll choose the smooth option with an octree depth of eight. After that, this is where we're gonna actually smooth everything out by using the corrective smooth, sorry, smooth corrective. We'll go ahead and set that factor to one, the repeat to about 200, and then make sure you check only smooth right here. Now we're gonna get this super smooth shape that we're gonna be able to work with, and we're gonna make this into glass. Now that we have all the shapes that we need, I'm gonna go ahead and hide our image plane, and I'm actually gonna switch over to rendered view because we're gonna be using cycles for all of this. You can see right now that we don't have any lighting, so I'm gonna to go to my world scene, and I'm just gonna bump up this color value until it's a little bit brighter so that we can see our objects. The very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take this bottom plane, make a new material, and I'll just make this a green, maybe like a dark green like that. Now our top material, we're actually gonna make this a new material as well. We're gonna choose glass, and we're gonna lower the roughness as well. We're actually gonna create a custom shader for this. Now, if you go to the top-down view, and you move the glass around, you can already start to see that we're sort of giving, getting that effect that we're looking for, but we're gonna customize this even further to get the exact result that Apple gets. Now, before we go any further, I do wanna go ahead and hop over to Material Preview here. I want to make sure that everything is nice and close to each other. So we're gonna bring this plane up, and if you hold Shift, you can basically exactly place it where the other object is. We're gonna go ahead and scale these planes up on the side, bring them in a little bit. Again, these are gonna act as our reflectors. On the left, you can keep this with no material, or you can create a new material with a white color. On the right-hand side, we're gonna make this a black material like that and this will all make sense once we turn on the lighting with our rendered view going into rendered view here another thing that i want to do is i actually want to click on my bottom plane and i want to give this a slightly gray color and this will make more sense once we add our area light so let's go ahead and add in a area light here i'll bring this up i'll give it a value of about 500 and then what we're going to do is we are going to move it over off to the side here i'll go back to solid view so you guys can see this easier and we're actually going to point it sort of towards our shape here. We're gonna point it probably about that way there with the X being about negative 73 or so. And I'll also rotate it this way. I'm also gonna scale it down just a little bit. Something like that should be pretty good. And we're gonna go into rendered view and see what we have so far. Now it's very powerful, so you may have to knock it down a little bit. Now when we go to our top down view, you can see how now we kind of have these highlights around our shape. 
In this case, I'll actually knock this down to an even lower value to about 50. Now you're starting to see we're getting sort of the result that we want. I also noticed this glass is not quite big enough. So we're going to scale it on the Y axis in edit mode. Maybe a little bit less than that. That looks pretty good. And we're going to also be adjusting the actual location of this glass as well. We'll be using a custom shader that I created just for this exact purpose. All right, heading over to our shading tab, we're going to go ahead and click on our glass and we're going to add the following nodes that you see on the right hand side. I put them there for your convenience, but we're basically going to take our glass and we're going to mix it with another glass BSDF. I found that this just really works very well and I'll explain why it works the way that it does. Make sure they're plugged in as you see here. We're also going to need a color ramp to control our layer weight. Color ramp. And we're going to go ahead and plug our layer weight into the color ramp. And this is going to allow us to kind of get that subtle roughness around the outside. So facing, we'll kind of leave that about 0.6 or so. And then we'll go ahead and plug this color into an invert color. We'll go ahead and plug that into the factor. Now for our IOR, I found that an IOR about 1.33 works for the bottom. Go ahead to our top down view and rendered view. There we go. And then for our glass BSDF up top, I'm gonna to do about 1.1. And for our roughness, we're gonna plug in our color ramp into that roughness so we can actually get a little bit of roughness on the outside. I'm gonna go ahead and tweak our color ramp just a little bit. And you kind of see how on the outside we have a slight highlight. That's a kind of exactly what we're going for here. This looks really good so far. Now we just need to adjust the location of the lighting and the glass itself to get the result that we want. In our top down view, I'm going to go ahead and adjust the Z value until I'm getting the result that I want. Now, taking a look at our original file, you can see that I have everything placed very nicely on here. I've actually duplicated my plane several times on both occasions to get my glass uh, right here. You can see to get a circle, all you have to do is create a plane that's perfectly square. And then the same goes for these. You just simply duplicate them and scale them down with their modifiers. And you can see as we look on our top down view here, we pop into our camera, everything looks really good. I'm also using an orthographic camera, which seems to have a better effect for this result. You can see that I can move my glass around and we get that really nice distortion around the edges. Again, this is the shader right here that we're using. This just looks fantastic. I'm gonna go ahead and provide the Gumroad file for you guys for free uh, because I want everyone to be able to create this effect and I think it's really important to know how to do this, especially since this is new in Apple's design realm and a lot of people are gonna be trying to recreate this effect. Uh, keep in mind that the results that you're going to get are going to be quite different depending on the lighting that you have. For example, right here I have my area light. I just want to show you what would happen if I move this area light up. You can see how it dramatically changes the lighting, right? This is with no area light, and this is as we start to move that area light up. Really, the part you want to focus on is right here, this outer rim, this highlight, right? We're getting that because we have a roughness plugged into our glass BSDF here. And you see, I can control that as much as I want. If I wanted to have a greater fall off, I can do that with my color ramp here, or I can adjust my blending mode, right? So if you want it to really come in on the layer weight, you can adjust that as well. That's totally up to you guys. I kind of liked where I had it before. I just think it looks pretty natural and it looks like Apple's actual glass. Um, in terms of rendering, I would suggest 300 samples and definitely turn denoising on. It's gonna really make everything look really nice and crisp and it's gonna blur out that glass, make it look very smooth as well. So that's the tutorial. Uh, basically, the biggest challenge here to create this effect is the lighting and making sure that your glass is placed at a proper distance above your object. So just real quick, one more time. Again, adjusting that Z value. You can see that as I adjust that Z value, you're gonna get a completely different result depending on how far that glass is away from the object that's underneath of it. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please consider subscribing. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that good YouTube stuff. And then please go ahead and check out my Gumroad page. I have plenty of awesome products on there that I sell. Some are for free, some cost money, but this one I'll offer to you guys for free because I want you guys to play around with this and have fun with this. Have a great day and I will see you in the next tutorial.